Picture this. 20,000 Romanians gathered in central Bucharest in January 2012. The everyday Romanian has had it with the government's new health reform, and they're speaking out. The protests turn ugly. Protesters and the gendarmes start to bicker. Things turn violent. 88 people are injured, and 283 are arrested. Now let's look a year ahead. In 2013, 200,000 protesters came out to reject the government's mining project. How did the people in authority react? They declare Black Tuesday, a new set of amendments to the penal code that guarantees special immunity to MPs and the president. They're also safe from being investigated by the National Anti-Corruption Directorate. And now, imagine one of the biggest protests in European history, when over 600,000 people took to the streets in 2017 to protest against the government. The streets were flooded by people with banners, chanting slogans against the cabinet for proposing changes to the Romanian penal code. The ministers wanted more immunity, and the Romanians wanted more accountability. Civil unrest started in 2012. We're now in 2024. How has Romania dealt with corruption? Has it been curbed? To answer that question, we have to start from the beginning. Romania joining the European Union, establishing the DNA, the cases that led the people to question the DNA's validity, how the life of the average Romanian is affected, and what will the EU do now? Let's get started. One of the first things Romanians had to check off after defeating the communist regime was joining the European Union, a coalition that prides itself on being just. The European Union is seen by the world as a coalition of all European nations, but that's not the case. Europe is home to 50 countries, 44 if you only consider the nations with their capital inside the continent. In any case, the EU is made up of only 27 nations. That's because the EU prides itself in being exclusive and allowing only certain countries to join. There are a few rules to be followed, and the Copenhagen criteria outlines what needs to be met if a country wishes to join. Broadly, they include guaranteeing democracy, the rule of law, and fulfilling human rights. The rule of law is important to remember for today's video. The EU has repeatedly brought it up when it comes to questioning if Romania should be suspended from the Union, and it'll be brought up a lot in this video. Romania was one of the first countries to apply for EU membership in 1993. The Union allowed Romania to join in 1995, but only as an associated state. In 2004, their status was upped as an exceeding state and Romania formally joined the EU in 2007. That's 14 years. It took the founding members of the EU 14 years to decide on Romania's status, and that's because of, yes, the rule of law. The rule of law states that every citizen of a country enjoys the same rights. It also states that people in a position of governance should not use their authority to get ahead. Overall, the rule of law seeks to protect every citizen's civil rights and civil liberties, we're going to have to turn back time for a moment. The communist period was one of the worst times in the country's history. The 2006 Presidential Commission was established to truly understand the impact of communist rule in Romania. It showed that close to 2 million Romanians died during the 40 years, mostly by starvation. So, the 1989 revolution was supposed to mark a new chapter in the history of the country. Things don't necessarily go as planned. Far from it. There are a few theories. Political scientist and author Razma Carlins elaborated that real corruption started after communism ended, largely because the average citizen didn't know how else to benefit from a non-communist state other than to be corrupt. Romania joined the EU on the same day as Bulgaria. At the time, Commission President José Manuel Barroso warned them that they were still under strict observation. And determined to join the EU, Romania established the National Anti-Corruption Directorate, the DNA in 2002. The agency was modeled after similar organizations in Belgium, Norway, and Spain, three of the least corrupt countries in the world. Corruption has always been a problem in Romania. The problem didn't go away once the communist regime did. But now, Romania had a lot at stake, its membership in the EU. Critics have argued that the DNA has yet to make a breakthrough in abolishing corruption in Romania. The closest they came to it was in 2007, when Decebal Traian Remesh was almost brought to justice. Video evidence showed the then Minister of Agriculture steering lucrative contracts toward a business associate. In return, he was paid $20,000, a new car, 
along with 200 pounds of pork sausage and 50 gallons of plum brandy. Trayan Remish didn't act alone. Former Minister of Agriculture, Iowan Avram Murashan, also received money and food from the same associate. The video caused an uproar in Romania, and Trian Remesh immediately resigned from ministry. For the next five years, the former minister evaded justice more or less. He was eventually brought along with Iowan to the High Court of Cassation and Justice. The two men were found guilty of fraud, bribery, and theft. They were sentenced to three years each, which culminated in execution. However, after serving less than a year behind bars, Dechabal was released on parole in 2014. He remained a free man until his death from natural causes in 2020. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to show your support by giving us a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And now, let's compare it to the similar event that took place in Spain. In 2018, Eduardo Zaplana, the Spanish Minister for Employment and Social Security, was arrested on corruption charges. The charges against him were for bribery and fraud, much like Dechabal. Zaplana's charges came to light years after he'd stepped down. However, Spanish authorities caught up to him in his home to arrest him in 2018. Not just that, but Zaplana's company, Telefonica, severed ties with him immediately. The most shocking corruption scandals coming from Romania, however, involved its ministers of justice. Two of them. Romanians took to the streets in what became the second largest protest in the history of the country, second only to the protests that led to the fall of the communist regime in 1989. This time, they were calling for the resignation of Florin Yoridake. Why? For several reasons. The Minister of Justice in January 2017 launched the emergency ordinance. Broadly, Yoridake suggested that the Romanian legislature should decriminalize official misconduct offenses if under a certain threshold, around 11,000 euros. Why this amount? Nobody understood why, and people instantly felt that they were being taken for fools. Previously, the former Minister of Justice had caused an uproar when he forced the top Romanian anti-corruption lawyer to resign. Justice had been one of the most corrupt factions of the Romanian government, ironically. Tudor Cuiariu had one of the shortest careers as Justice Minister, eight months. From the very first day he was sworn in, Kyuyariu caused an uproar when he began replacing seasoned judges with inexperienced ones. He also feuded with the DNA and often held private meetings asking the DNA to drop their investigations. His undoing came in October 2007 when Kyuyariu proposed an emergency decree. He claimed that all existing cases into eight ministers, including him, should be seized immediately. President Trian Besescu went on live television to demand Kyuyariu's resignation. He resigned in December 2007, but remained an active member of Kalin popescu Tarechanu's team. Romania has long struggled with finding an appropriate Minister of Justice. Iordake and Kyoariu are two examples. Elsewhere, in Belgium, Vincent van Quickenborn stepped down from his role and publicly apologized for his role in a 2023 terrorist attack. A Tunisian man seeking asylum in Brussels killed two football fans in 2023 while injuring a third. Van Quickenborn claimed that because he, as Justice Minister, wasn't able to extradite the asylum seeker, he must resign. What's ironic here is that the Belgium authorities didn't have to ask for Van Quickenborn's resignation. He stepped down, recognizing he'd made a mistake. But in Romania, that didn't happen that easily. Iordake and Kyuariu are just two examples. Yet, they still haven't. The biggest corruption scandal in Romanian history came in 2015. That was the year that Romanians flooded the streets and demanded Prime Minister Victor Ponta resign from the office immediately. There was only one problem. Ponta said it was all a lie. In 2015, the DNA filed 18 counts of corruption against Ponta. The charges dated back to 2008, when the former Prime Minister was still working as a lawyer. Ponta was believed to have committed forgery, tax evasion, and money laundering starting in 2007 and continuing into 2015. The DNA claimed that Ponta had taken close to 200,000 lei as a bribe from one of his associates. He then drew up 17 forged invoices to justify the bribe. Ponta used most of the money to purchase two luxury apartments in Bucharest. Who was Ponta's associate in this corruption case? The Minister of Infrastructure, Dan Sova. Interestingly, Sova only came into office after Ponta relentlessly lobbied for him. Ponta has always been a controversial figure in Romanian politics. 
Romanians took to the street in 2012, and then again in 2015, demanding Ponta's resignation. They eventually succeeded in 2015, when the former prime minister stepped down. But did the DNA succeed in bringing him to justice? During his tenure, Ponta had immunity, something that the DNA desperately tried to get the parliament to relinquish. They denied. In 2015, they finally had the grounds to prosecute him, and they did. Despite all the evidence against him, though, Victor Ponta was acquitted of all charges in 2018. Charging the former head of state for corruption, however, has never been a challenge for other European nations. In 2022, the former president of Moldova, Igor Dodon, was arrested. The charges against him were for corruption and high treason. Although the process of bringing Dodon to justice wasn't straightforward, Moldovan authorities did it anyway. Why couldn't Romania? Through all of this, we have to ask, how has this impacted the everyday Romanian? Public polling in 2022 showed that 14% of Romanians believed that their biggest problem was economic turmoil. 19% echoed the same concern and believed that inflation was the biggest issue. The 10% that believed Romania's biggest problem was crime admitted that it was because of the economic situation. In 2012, it was reported that 30% of Romanians lived on less than $5 a day. This established Romania's status as the poorest country in the European Union. Unsurprisingly, a major cause for this was the rampant corruption in nearly every sector of the country. According to Transparency International's Global Corruption Barometer, 45% of the population believed corruption had increased. This was during the period between 2022 and 2023. The metric also revealed that 20% of the population admitted to bribing government officials. They claim that it's standard practice in Romania. As it stands today, Romania is violating the EU's fundamental condition, the rule of law. A 2015 poll showed that 66% of Romanians were grateful to be part of the EU. A sharp increase from the 2013 poll that showed only 30% believed it was beneficial for Romanians. However, while the EU cannot revoke a country's membership, it can suspend it. Critics have argued that Romania, even in the 21st century, is still navigating a post-communism nation. The major reason why corruption is still alive and thriving is because the communist parties in Romania plundered the country to no end. Since 1989, Romanians have been picking up the pieces, and then some, left by new governments. The EU has helped Romania stand on its own, especially during times of social and political instability. However, if Romania continues to violate the coalition's rule of law, it might be in trouble. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and while you're here, check out some of our other videos.